Hey YouTube, it's IC and welcome to part 6 of my definitive rumors guide to the upcoming iPhone 6S and iPhone 6S Plus. To ensure that you don't miss out on the first 5 parts, watch my dedicated playlist. I'll have it linked for you guys here. All right, so to get started here, if you guys are interested in the wallpaper I'm rocking on my 6 Plus, I'll have it for you guys in the cards. Now, keep in mind that these upcoming iPhone models are S upgrades, which means that overall they will maintain the same design from a physical standpoint as their predecessors being the current iPhone models. So that means that the protruding camera lens on the back, as well as the plastic lines at the top and bottom that act as signal windows for the otherwise all metal enclosure are here to stay for at least one more generation. And with that said, let's go ahead ahead and get into this by first of all talking about some of the more feasible and some of the more plausible rumors. So when will the next iPhone be available? Well according to some newer reports which back up past Intel that I've gone over, Apple will hold their keynote to unveil both of the new devices on Wednesday September 9th. Which means that if this iPhone launch follows past releases then we can expect to pre-order the device on Friday September 11th and it will actually start shipping out or arriving to customers on Friday the 18th. So that's one week from when it will be available for pre-order according to these rumors guys. Now looking back in the past, if we go to the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus launch, it was announced on September 9th and it was available for purchase September 19th. iPhone 5S September 10th, available for purchase September 20th. iPhone 5, the event was on September 12th and again available for purchase on September 21st. All right, now with some of the purported launch information out of the way, according According to an alleged leaked diagram that illustrates the logic board for the iPhone 6s, it will feature the expected A9 CPU along with some upgrades that were also previously detailed, so primarily an NFC hardware upgrade which will be used for of course Apple Pay and maybe Apple will open it up this time around to third party developers, especially if they're in the process of updating the NFC hardware, though it's likely not expected for iOS 9, if at all, we'll just have to wait and see as well as some upgraded LTE components, so double the speed for LTE, at least theoretically, though that will be contingent upon the carriers and whether they actually want to open up that potential to their customers or not. Next, we have some Geekbench scores that are probably fake, but let's get into them anyway. So for those of you who don't know, Geekbench is an awesome tool. It's cross-platform, and essentially what it does is it takes into account various aspects of your device or computer, whatever you're actually running Geekbench on, to kind of give you an overall overall cumulative computing score that, again, is a numeric representation of your device's capabilities. The numbers don't directly translate into power and performance as much on iOS devices because iOS does such a great job at optimization and its ability to run and make use of some lower spec devices. But running it here on my iPhone 6 Plus, we do have a single core score of 1618 and a multi-core score of 2892. Now, these alleged 6S tests show a single core score of 1800 so not that much of a jump in single core versus the current iPhone 6 Plus. Though keep in mind this is a 6 Plus and the leak score belongs to an iPhone 6S or at least supposedly does. And it has a multi-core score of 4,577. So that's where we would likely see the biggest jump with the A9 CPU. And if this is any representation of the actual score for the 6S, though keep in mind again it likely won't be, then that higher multi-core score could probably be attributed to a bump up in the number of cores of the CPU itself. So when we look at the iPad Air 2, that actually has a tri-core design. So it features three cores. So we may see a three-core processor found in the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. However, when we actually look at the system information inside of Geekbench here on the 6 Plus, you'll notice we have one gig of RAM. That's of course information we've known for months ever since the device was announced and released. But when we look at the corresponding screenshot for the alleged 6S, we actually see the same amount of RAM, one gigabyte in the screenshot, 989 megabytes, which of course does translate to one gig, with an Apple A9 CPU clocked at two gigahertz. And interestingly, the CEO of Geekbench actually came forward and said that the scores were fake. Well, we'll just have to wait and see and we'll have to run some Geekbench tests of our own on the upcoming device. But that may be what we can look forward to, at least from a processor performance standpoint from the next generation iPhone. Now getting into some other rumors here that, like the Geekbench 
Geekbench scores are likely fake, we have an alleged photo of a full-fledged iPhone 6S. So according to a Chinese-based website, they claim that they were able to get their hands on a photo of a rose gold iPhone 6S in packaging complete with an Apple Store bag in the background, which I don't know, maybe they thought that that added some form of authenticity to their image, but the chances of it being fake are significantly higher than those of it actually being authentic or real. But having said that, we are expected to see a new color option this time around with the iPhone 6S to sit alongside the current silver, space gray, and gold configurations, being rose gold, which honestly could be more reminiscent of pink than the rose gold we see in the higher end Apple Watch edition, which is supposedly why Apple will be introducing that new color variation. And speaking of colors, we are expected to see a darker version of the current space gray to kind of return to the roots of the slate iPhone 5. Now moving right along to something else that doesn't seem quite feasible or possible with the next generation iPhone, we have a drawing on just a piece of paper from who's supposedly a Foxconn insider, so maybe just an employee that works at Foxconn, the factories of the company that produces large quantities of iPhone components, stating that the next generation device will actually have a third size variation, being 5 inches, that will sit in the middle of the iPhone 6S being 4.7 inches and 6S Plus being 5.5 inches. Now it likely won't happen, but would you guys like to see a 5 inch iPhone 6S? Let me know down below in the comment section. It may be great for people who want something slightly bigger than the 4.7 inch iPhone, but aren't quite willing to make the jump up to a plus iPhone like the 6 Plus or 6S Plus. All right, and that concludes everything I wanted to discuss related to the next generation iPhones. But before we wrap up here, I wanted to mention another rumored device, more specifically a new report that seems to shed some light on the device and its elusive nature. The supposed iPad Pro, which has been in the Apple rumor mill for years now at this point, a device that's expected to dwarf the current largest iPad being the iPad Air 2 and feature a screen of 12 inches. So in other words, a totally massive iPad. Well, According to an analytics company named Apsi, they found an identifier of iPad 6,8 in some of their logs. And when Mac rumors actually asked them to look into the version of iOS the iPad was running, they were able to pick up with their analytics software that the hits from the device with the identifier iPad 6,8 was on iOS 9.1, a firmware that Mac rumors previously claimed through their own analytics they were receiving hits from. So, of course, that's nothing out of the ordinary. Apple is known to test firmwares far in advance, but what is interesting is that supposedly the iPad Pro, again iPad 6, 8, could already be on iOS 9.1, meaning that it likely won't accompany the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus at next month's event, probably intended again for the dedicated iPad event, which is expected this time around in October of 2015, so approximately one month following the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. Now I hope you guys liked this video. If you did and you're interested in winning a $100 Amazon or iTunes, gift card, be sure to rate it up and check out the video where I highlight the instructions. I'll have that link to for you guys here. And let me know your thoughts related to the next generation iPhones down below in the comment section. I'd love to hear them and whether you guys are actually interested in upgrading yourselves. And keep in mind, I will probably do an iPhone 6S giveaway. So again, be sure to show that like button some love. And of course, if you want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos similar to this one covering things like Apple's next generation iPhones or even jailbreaking, be sure to click the subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you have yet to. Also, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.